Quantum Computing Inc. is a full-stack quantum software and hardware company on a mission to accelerate the value of quantum computing for real-world business solutions. And with me is Hunter Gaylor, co-host and new to the street, and Bob Laskowski, the CEO of Quantum Computing. So great to have you back. Thanks, and Jane. Let's just start with this major news. A Nobel Prize was awarded for photonic quantum entanglement. So explain that and how does that vindicate the work that you're doing? Well, it, it, it really, uh, it's, it's great. It's um, the whole notion of entanglement has been debated for a long time. Right? It goes back to Einstein, didn't believe that entanglement existed. He thought there were other variables, hidden variables that ultimately were responsible for these, like what he, he said were spooky actions, right? That's the way he termed it. But uh, the work that was done by the, by the awardees just validated the fact that you can entangle photons and, and that's the, the essence of quantum computing. And it's a, it's a deep science, right? But at the end of the day for us, it's very validating. It, it proves that a couple things, a photonic computing is real. This notion of entanglement is a real thing. And the business applications of what that ultimately will empower for us to be able to take this into the marketplace uh, is really, for, again, I just can use the word validating because it's just, it's, it's great. To, hear, to see that uh, kind of announcement come out and recognize the hard work that these men have done. Yeah. Well, you recently had with one of your subsidiaries some news come out with regards to um, you know uh, this NASA contract. Can mm -hmm. you talk about a little bit about how your company is working on that contract and sure. what that means for the growth of your company? Sure. That, I mean, it's really the first meaningful commercial or contract we've had on that work and or any of that work, any of the quantum work really and. So it's two things. Number one, uh, it again validates the need for these types of technologies, the things we can do with photonics, LIDAR in particular, it's, that's what this contract is. It's helping us further um, refine the LIDAR capability that can be used from space to determine snow depth from space. That has environmental impact, obviously. There's some other uses for it. There's sort of dual use capabilities there. But um, it's very, again, I use the word validating several times here, but it really is. It's, it's confirmation that the work we're doing is really, is really good work, right? And it has commercial and, in this case, scientific uh, applications to it. Um, but to your point about the establishment of the wholly owned subsidiary, we needed that mechanism to be able to do business with the government. Um, you know, you can have commercial companies do business with the government, but in this environment, particularly with the sensitive uh, technologies that we're using, the government has its requirements that it wants to see companies that are U.S. owned, have U.S. personnel in them that they can trust, obviously, uh, for sensitive technologies to be able to do the contract work. So we established uh, key solutions, QI solutions, um, as that mechanism. Uh, it's headed up by a veteran, uh, 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 a very proven leader in this space coming out of the DOD environment that um, has done companies like this in the past, transferring technologies from commercial into military or uh, scientific use. But the, the important thing is we have a mechanism now by which we can transfer our capabilities to government contracts. And we expect a lot more coming on the heels of that. And what does that mean for the, the revenues of your company? Well, it's great. I mean, the government you know, uh, is typically, uh, for early stage technologies like this, the government's the first one to take the risk in trying to apply it. And oftentimes, as you've seen with a lot of the investment that's been going on, um, it's coming out of the government. At first, it was for research. Past few years, you know, it was just about research orientation. And, but what's coming out now is for application of technologies. And the government, you know, we talk about government being risk adverse or what have you. The government will put money into technologies that they think are going to have a material impact, national security impact, scientific impact, and that helps lead the commercial market into the space. The commercial markets always look for some sort of validation, and the government gives it that validation by saying, hey, we're investing, so this is something you should be doing. So even to the AI arena that's mm -hmm. often talked about, government invested in AI decades ago. It just never materialized as a really useful technology until we had things like better computers and more information, right? But the early adopters were always on the government side. Mm -hmm. So this is a similar mindset. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. And talk a little bit about the security launch uh, now that your patent <clears throat> right. has been awarded addressing unconditional network security. And what does that mean? For so the um, first off, at the, uh, you know, at the co corporate level, you know, we've, we've talked about the things we're going to be doing and we're doing them, right? So it's not just hyperbole. It's not just hype. It's about saying we've got these technologies. We've developed them. We're bringing them in the marketplace. So first was, well, not first. One of the early ones was LiDAR. 
right? Uh, similarly with cybersecurity, we have the photonic, using photonics and the so same core technology, we have the ability to do th to things differently. So cybersecurity applications, near and dear to my heart, spent a lot of my adult life working in these problems. Um, being able to look at post-quantum cryptography applications, so the concern is quantum computing is going to break RSA encryption. So all our secrets are going to be known. It's true. It will happen. Hasn't probably happened yet, but it's going to happen. So how do you protect against that? You need other quantum systems to be able to do that. So we step right into that void where we are right in the middle of being able to provide uh, authentication, uh, secure networks, and encryption to secure against the quantum threat. Yeah. Interesting where this is all going. Well, it's, <laughs> it's incredible to see the company and where it's going from when we first started mm -hmm. talking with Bob to now and yeah. actually seeing, you know, the headlines and the news and the awarding of these contracts. I think it's a testament to what they're doing and what the future of quantum is. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, we've got a great team. No, with, without, you know, I think we've got the best team in the industry to be quite candid with. I would say that. But honestly, I think we really do because we're, we're bringing the technology to the marketplace. And candidly, we are ahead of the competition, both computationally, and that's the benefit of the company, right? The company is not just a one trick pony. We're not just doing computational stuff, right? It's just not about creating a quantum computer. We have all these adjacent quantum technologies and these solutions which we're bringing to the marketplace that really, it's unparalleled to anybody else that can do this. We're, I think, one of the few companies, if not the only company, doing this today. So we have a very broad base in the market. We're, ex we're ex uh, executing on the quantum computers that we're, we're, we talked about the last time, the Entropy quantum computer, mm -hmm. our Dirac 1. We're going to be releasing our Dirac 2. Both optimization capabilities. One does uh, uh, Cubo. Um, or a quadratic uh, unconstrained binary optimization. The other one does integer-based optimization. Uh, different problem sets. In fact, the integer one is a much more complex optimization capability. It's going to hit the um, market, and it's going to be used for supply chain, logistics, really, really complex problems. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing. Right? It's yeah. just an op it's a great opportunity for this company. It, it is amazing, and it's amazing to imagine, and, and it feels like some real-world applications are. Too, are starting to yep. come to fruition. So. That's for sure. Yeah, very exciting. Yeah. Thank you so much, Bob, and thank you, you again. Hunter, as well. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks.